e to the i pi equals negative 1. If this is your first time looking at this equality, then there's probably a lot of questions and confusion. For example, one question might be, what is this number i, and what does it mean to raise e, a real number, to this power? Let's begin by addressing those urgent concerns. The number i is defined as the square root of negative 1. Now, it will be quite hard if we try to find a number satisfying this property. In fact, there isn't a number on the real numbers number line that will square to negative 1. So mathematicians define an entirely new class of numbers, known as imaginary numbers which are all built on i, and none of them can be found on the real numbers line. Then we're dismayed by their name. It's no more imaginary than negative numbers. For example, you cannot visualize negative 3 apples. To represent imaginary numbers graphically, we can visualize an imaginary numbers axis which is parallel to the line of real numbers. A number which is a combination of real and imaginary numbers are known as complex numbers. On this plane, the number negative 1 is here, i is here, and the number 1 plus 4i is here. So complex numbers not only have a size, but also a direction. So, an alternative way to define a complex number would be to take the angle of this triangle and then move forward this lens, which gets us to the same point representing the number. This polar representation using an angle and a size is more useful when we're multiplying complex numbers together. Let's then take a look at how the number e is defined. If you were at a bank with one pound in the account, and the bank generously offers you an amazing 100% interest per year, with the added bonus of giving you the chance to, to choose how to compound and split that 100% interest, then the most natural thing to do would be to find a way to maximize what you can gain from this opportunity, right? If the 100% interest was claimed altogether at the same time, then you would have 1 plus 1 equals 2 pounds in the bank account. If the interest was split up into two 50% segments, then you would have 1 plus a half to the power of 2, which is 2.25 pounds in the end. Likewise, if the interest was split up into, say, 12 segments of 8 and a third percent each, then you would have 1 plus 1 twelfths to the power of 12, which is roughly 2.6 pounds. In general, splitting up into n segments would yield 1 plus 1 over n to the power of n amount of cash in the bank account. Pause if you need time to understand. There's something interesting here. The more times we split, the more money we get despite having the same 100% interest overall. If we split this interest into infinitely many pieces, then we will have the maximum amount of money in the bank account in the end. This amount of money is the number e. Mathematically, this can be expressed as taking the limit as n approaches infinity of our expression earlier. Now, raising e to the power of something, say x, is just raising this expression, which equals e, to the x power. With some manipulation, i.e. subbing in u equals xn, we find this new equivalent expression for e to the power of x. Now, using what we had before, and subbing in i pi for x in this equation, we find that e to the i pi is also equal to this expression. The number inside the brackets turn out to be a complex number, which is good because it's something we can understand. By doing some trigonometry, we find that the number's angle is the inverse tan of pi over n, whilst the size of that number is the square root of 1 plus pi over n squared. When we multiply complex numbers together, what ends up happening is that their angles get added together, and the lengths get multiplied together. As raising a number to the nth power is just multiplying it by itself n times, the result of this will have an angle n times as large, and its length will be this, raised to the nth power. As e to the i pi is defined for n approaching infinity, the larger our n, the closer we will get to e to the i pi's true value. This animation shows what happens for increasing values of n. Because we have a very large value of n, we can make a few simplifications. For example, as pi divided by an infinitely large number is more or less zero, the size of our number would be pretty much equal to 1. Our angle would also get very small as our side length of pi over n is close to zero. And when the angle is very small, we can ignore the inverse tan altogether. Thus, we have a complex number of size 1, which has an angle of pi over n. Taking this to the nth power means our number will have an angle of pi over n times n, which is pi, but its size will remain 1. And what is this number when plotted on the complex plane? Amazingly, we have concluded that e to the i pi is equal to, indeed, negative.